next one is standing on the promises. His wondrous uh, promises is made to us, and we are going to claim it. Amen. So join us, please. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. shall prevail, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of together to ask Lord's blessing as we are doing today.
Good morning, saints. Let us pray. Father in heaven, dear Lord, we are truly thankful for this privilege, this awesome privilege, dear Lord, to be in your house this morning. The weather was threatening, dear Lord, but I see your people, they came out anyway, dear Lord, because we feel, dear Lord, dear Lord that worshiping you is more important than anything. And we pray, dear Father, that you be with each and every one of us here this morning, that we would have a, a glorious day in the Lord. And Father, we ask that you would remember those who are still on their way. Hasten them there, Lord, that we might have a, a wonderful worship day, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you. We praise you there, Lord. Bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we do as usual? come out of our seats and reach out and take someone by the hand and welcome them into the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome. Good morning again. I have an announcement or two. And the first one says that we're having a little problem here in the building with the bathrooms. So, so we are kind of forced to use the bathrooms in the gym. It's a little walk, but what's important? Okay, very well. So there are bathrooms over there that's working. Um, do we have any first time visitors? I, I don't want to forget that. Sometimes I have a tendency to forget our first time visitor. Do we have someone who's been, this is, is their first trip here?
If you're the first time, you've got to get the hand up real high now so I can see you. Okay, everybody's been here before. So we are all what? Family. Family. Okay, very well. Okay, then. I just want to welcome everybody out this morning and to share a few things with you. The first one is the prayer cards. If you have a request, if you want to speak to Pastor Dan about a matter, you can um, you can just write it on the prayer cards. If you have someone that's sick, if there's any kind of problem that you would like for Pastor to address, you know, just put it on the prayer card and turn it in. We'll pick up those prayer cards during the time that we're doing prayer. So well, you can begin writing it right now, whatever it is that concerns you. Um, Wednesday night prayer meeting. I think Brother Derek, our head deacon, he has the study of the third chapter of the book of, um, of the Great Controversy. And you can catch us on Zoom. Uh, either you can come out here, because we're out here Wednesday night at 6.30, and you can study the Great Controversy. Pastor's leading out with that. He's here every Wednesday night. So if you would like a copy of that study, you see the young man here, he has that study in his hand. So just raise your hand and he'll give you one. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, thank you very much. It's nice having a head digging around, right? Um, he says this coming Wednesday night, um, he won't have um, prayer meeting. I think the church voted to um, put it off until the following week. He think everyone is going to be preparing for um, for what? Yeah, they're going to be home cooking. I mean, I don't want nobody to interfere with my cook. Okay, very well. Okay, next week. You know, Pastor, um, on this coming Sunday, the Titusville men's, men's Ministry are inviting the men to come out on Sunday morning to a putt, putt golf game. It's on Cocoa Beach. They say if you go um, 520 to A1A, uh, that's far as you can go on it, right? And make a right turn down past Ron John there. There is the putt-putt golf course. And after that, they're going to have a lunch, the men are, at the Long Doggers. And they are inviting us to, to be a part of that. So, uh, I, I, pastors, he's a men's ministry specialist. He, he, he's been going away from us for a little time because he is in charge of men's ministry at the conference. And he says he can't run men's ministry in the conference and don't have a men's ministry in his churches. So he's going to... Right, sooner or later, he's going to call on us to come together for a men's ministry meeting. But Titusville is off and running, and they're having their first gathering, and they're inviting us to come along with them. So if you feel Sunday morning, get up and ride out there and be a part of that. Did somebody comment? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. It's going to be out there, 10 o'clock. Now... My writing has gotten a little bit cold, so please bear with me. I think I need to go to um, to um, community service. Um, there's somebody that's going to 
give me a hard time if I if I mess this up. Say it again. Okay. She bought this poster. She want me to share with you all. On Sunday, I think she says 8.30 in the morning, she's going to be here getting prepared for a community service day, which is going to take place on Monday. And she need people to come out and work with her to help her to get, get her the darkest room in shape, get things set up on Monday morning. And I, I, I think, well, I think they're going to be giving away some some baskets as well to the people on Monday morning. So on, su on Sunday morning, she needs your help. And on Monday morning, she needs your help again because that's going to be the actual close giveaway day. So if you all can give her your support, come out here and work with her on Sunday morning as well as on Monday morning. I think in the bulletin, and I don't have a bulletin, that there is a second reading that we need to take a vote on. The board moved um, at its last session and asked Mr. Jim King, would he be our safety officer? And Mr. Jim King has accepted to be the safety officer for the church. And um, we had the first reading last week. Now this week, we need to vote on it. Um, all in favor of accepting Mr. Jim King as our safety officer, raise a hand. It seems as if it's carried. Mr. Jim is our safety officer. Okay. I hope I haven't missed anything here. Okay, very well. I think that's all from here on. We won't follow, follow the bulletin. Thank you all very much. It's children's story time, so if you have some children, just bring them forth. Miss Jan is going to lead us out in our children's story. Happy Sabbath, Church. I thought our children's story would be fitting for Thanksgiving, so we're going to talk about pilgrims. Cece, do you know what a pilgrim is? You do. What's a pilgrim? A pilgrim is a... Okay. So, you need to keep this in mind, Cece. Pay attention. Okay, I'm going to tell you what a pilgrim is. And the Latin word peregrinus means foreigner, a stranger, someone on a journey, or temporary resident. The definition of a pilgrim is a person who goes on a long journey, often with a religious 
our moral purpose, and especially to a foreign land. Keep that in mind. Now Abraham lived in the city of Ur in Mesopotamia, which is present day Iraq. Abraham left Ur and he came unto Haran and he dwelt there. In Genesis 12, 1, God said, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Genesis 12, 2 says, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. So was Abraham a pilgrim? He most certainly was. What was he thankful for? He was thankful for the blessing to him and his house and forming all nations through his seed. Now Moses lived in Egypt. Cece, do you know where Egypt is? Where's Egypt? Don't know. And became favored of Pharaoh. And he was a Hebrew, but the only one that knew that Moses was a Hebrew was his real mother, his family, and his stepmom. He was drawn out of the water, out of the Nile, in a basket. And when Moses found out he was an Egyptian, but a Hebrew, he had compassion for the Hebrew slaves who were in captivity 400 years years. Isn't that a long time? That's like this many? Right? Okay. And they were badly mistreated. One day Moses saw a taskmaster and he was whipping a slave, a Hebrew slave. He was whipping and whipping and whipping him. Moses was so upset and angered that he killed the taskmaster. He was brought before Pharaoh his identity revealed as a Hebrew and was cast into the desert. He was there 40 years, went back to Egypt, and took the Hebrew people out of Egypt into the desert another 40 years. Now, was Moses and the Hebrew people pilgrims? Yes, they were. And what was Moses thankful for? He was thankful for being delivered from slavery. And the Hebrew people were thankful for being delivered from slavery. So now we jump into the future. It's 1620. The separatists, better known as the pilgrims, under the rule of King James I and then Charles I, they fled England and they went to Holland for a period of time. Now from Holland, they went to America. Now they fled because they were under the rule of the Roman Catholic Church. They did not want to be under the rule of the Roman Catholic Church. They did not believe that that was the true church and they wanted to get back to the true church. They wanted religious freedom, so they came to America. So what are we thankful for that Jesus died for our sins and that we also are pilgrims? For we are not of this world, we are just passing through. Pilgrims thankful for the safe passage to America and the natives showing them how to survive. So Jesus saved us. We are not of this world and our world is soon to come through the new Jerusalem that will come from heaven, come down and, and we will dwell with Jesus. So are we pilgrims? Yes, we are. Okay, you want to bow your head? Okay. Okay, perfect. Hey, Lord. Help me, Mommy. Amen. Amen. The children, well, CC. And our two beautiful girls are going to be collecting money for the school. <laughs> Have a blessed Sabbath.
Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Uh, I don't think I like that. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Are we okay today? I know it's a little gloomy, but praise God that the sun of righteousness shines in our hearts today so we can have a smile. Amen? Yeah. Amen. It's time for our tithe and offering. Um, the offering, the tithe and offering um, this morning will be lifted for the world budget. Um, also, let us remember that we are um, moving forward with our plans to re reopen our schools, so we still need support with that. So in your giving, please remember us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful, Lord, for the funds, Lord. We are grateful for the generosity of your people, and we ask that these funds be used for the furthering of the gospel so that you can come soon and very soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning. It is prayer time. Amen? Amen. This is a time by which we can talk to Jesus. Amen? Amen? What an awesome privilege it is to talk to a holy God. Amen? He who admonished us that we can come boldly before the throne and that we can bring whatever we want to him. And he promises that he will listen. Did he not? He wants to hear from us. It's not that he doesn't know because he knows everything, but he wants to hear from us. He loves us that much. He wants us to talk to him. So as it is our custom, um, are there any praise reports or any um, special prayer requests at this time? Sherry? I want everybody to pray for, he's kind of like my stepson-in-law, uh, Brian. He was having, um, started having severe headaches and then coordination issues with walking and typing and stuff. He's in the hospital right now in Alabama. They found um, uh, two spots on his brain. They don't know if it's a cyst, abscess, or if it's a tumor. They're supposed to get more results um, this coming Monday. Um, they may be doing like a biopsy. Uh, please pray for him that it's, it's something not serious and he can get better real soon. Amen. And his name was Brian? Brian. Okay, Brian. Okay. Anyone else? A praise report, an answered prayer, special prayer request at this time? And then also, if you have the, um, your prayer cards, um, you can um, hand them to Elder Wolf at this time. And we do pray about those prayer cards, so I just want to let you know that. Because prayer changes things, does it not? Amen. 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 
I know prayer changes things because I'm sitting here looking at each and every one of you. You, you, you could have been somewhere else, but if it hadn't been for that wonderful change that God wrought in your life, you wouldn't be sitting here today. So amen for that. I wanted to take this time to um, say that this last week when um, Sherry and I were uh, meeting with Nancy, the one that you know, Dia, yes. that she used to go and pray with, and she just was giving us so, much, so many accolades of how much she appreciated our church taking the time to come visit her to come visit her mom and dad. Oh, we love her. And she her. said yeah. that she, she just felt that this church was just a, an awesome church. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Morning, Good Church. I have a praise report for uh, Helping Hands, Titus Bell. We served way over 140 people oh, amen. this past week with food. Amen. And even though our people were a little slim, we got it done. And so I just praise God for that organization that if it, a lot of people tell us if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have food, but really it's God giving them the food. We're just the helpers, but I just praise God that we were able to feed so many people. Amen. Amen. Will there be another? Good morning, church. I want to Good give morning. my love and ask you all to pray for Sandy. She's not feeling well. Yes. Amen. I need prayer for my grandson's father. We don't know how he's living. We're suspecting he's living out of his car behind the garage he works at. And he needs a whole lot of prayer because he won't go over to his mom's house. And we honestly don't know what Thanksgiving's going to bring for him. What's his name? John Roberts. John Roberts, okay. Will there be another? Okay, so if there are no more requests, I'm sorry, Elder. Yes, um, I just want to mention a young lady here, and I, I know she needs prayer. Her father visited us here maybe two months ago, and she was living in Houston, Texas. And she moved here, I don't know, maybe last week sometime, my wife might know a little bit more about it, but she was pregnant. And she gave birth to twins yesterday, and both of them died. My daughter came and told us that. Both of them died. Now, I, I, I can just kind of imagine what kind of tizzy that, that this young lady must be in over this situation. And, and, and I, I, I just want us to remember her in prayer. Okay, so let us kneel as far as possible and let us petition the throne of grace. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, with bended knees and humble hearts, Lord. Lord, bowing to your sovereignty. We first ask for forgiveness of our sins, Lord, and if there's anything within us that will prevent this prayer from reaching heaven, we ask just now that you remove it. Lord, your people are hurting. For Lord, we live in a world where right seems wrong and wrong seems right, but Lord, we know who sits upon the throne, and we thank you, Lord, that you do. We ask a special blessing upon the young lady, Lord, who recently lost her two twins. For, Lord, in this life, we have many, many perplexities, Lord. We have to endure pain and, 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 and sorrow. But, Lord, we're so thankful that there's a bomb in Gilead. So, Lord, we humbly ask that you, that you comfort that mother just now, Lord, and let her know that you love her. 
And that Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose, even if we can't see it at the time. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon John Roberts just now, Lord, for his family is concerned. For Lord, you know his situation, Lord, and we ask that you speak into his situation just now, Lord, for we know you have mercy that suits every case. And we're thankful. We ask a special blessing upon Bryant, Lord, just now. He is in a hospital. Lord, he has some, some health challenges, Lord. But we know that you are a mighty physician, Lord, a great healer. It's not just what you do. It is who you are. And, Lord, we know that all things are in your hands. So we ask that you be with the doctors, Lord. Give them the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding, Lord, to dispense the right treatment. For we're trusting you for the healing. And, Lord, be with all of our missing members um, today and, and be with all those that are sick and shut in just now, Lord, and continue to be with Nancy, Lord, having recently lost Grandma Jeanette, Lord, and then earlier this year lost her father, Lord. Continue to be with them in a very, very special way. Lord, now we ask a special blessing upon the, your manservant, for he has prepared all he knows how, Lord. So now we ask that you speak through him unto your people, Lord, for only you know what we need most. So, Lord, impart unto his mind, Lord, what, what it is he needs, and give your people, Israel, a heart, Lord, to want to hear what it is you have to say unto us, Lord, and may we hide your words in our heart that we may not sin against thee. Last, Lord, we thank you for this Thanksgiving season. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done on behalf of our nation, Lord, and we know that no matter what happens in these last days, you are still in control. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading this morning will be taken from Psalms 79 and verse 13. Psalm 79 and verse 13. And the word of the Lord says, So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Amen. Our program will continue with um, our sister Claudette uh, giving thanks and acknowledgement along with our sister Shirley Wolf. This morning, we would truly like to thank Sister Wolf, who is the community leader for our insight on how Thanksgiving today. And at this time, I'm gonna ask her to say something to you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, I would like for Bonnie McClurkin, um, can't see the last name that right. McClurkin. McClurkin, stand up. And I think Dottie Jengrass is in the, um, 
in the, um, the kitchen. Dottie, yeah. Um, these are my assistants, and uh, we, along with Claudette, we would like to thank you for your donation. Um, so far, we, we have 31 thanks, Thanksgiving baskets to give out. And um, I just want to tell you a little story about one of the family that we're going to be giving a, uh, giving a Thanksgiving basket to. There's a young man, family of five, him and his wife both came down with COVID. He was in the hospital for two months. So they are really having a rough time. So I thank God that we'll be able to give him a basket, him and his family a basket today. I also got received a Thanksgiving um, gift card for my job. And I also put it in the card with, with um, the, a gift card that the church is giving to, to everyone that's receiving a basket. Um, each um, basket is going to have a Thanksgiving card. Um, so I just want to thank you for all what you have done. Um, and I want to also, while I'm up here, to ask you all to please um, come out tomorrow and help with the um, clothes giveaway day. We'll be getting this stuff together. And on Monday, we will have the clothes giveaway day. Um, and we will be giving most of the Thanksgiving basket out that day on, the, on, on Monday. <laughs> Um, and I, I also want to say another little thing. Um, the first um, close giveaway, giveaway day that I had at this church, there was a man that joined the church from the um, close giveaway day, the Spanish church. Amen. So it's not just about giving out clothes or giving out food. It's also about winning souls for, for Jesus. So I want you to continue to pray for our department. And, I, and once again, I thank you. Let us... We'd like to say a special prayer, thanking God for these, um, for the generosity of his people and for being so gracious to be able to supply and fill all these baskets that God placed it in their hearts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, dear God. Lord, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for everything. We thank you for the generosity of your people who look beyond and see that there is so much need in this world. Lord, we know there are so many people who are in need today. And we're asking you, dear God, we're thanking you for all your supplies that you give us so abundantly. And Father, most of all, we pray and we thank you for the love that you have placed within our hearts and for waking us to come into your courts today. May these baskets go forth and supply not just the physical food, but the spiritual food, dear yes. God. May souls be blessed and be one for thy kingdom. Yes. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to do a responsive reading and uh, if you would look into your hymnal 702 I will do the bowl read the bowl writing and you will read the light one so if you find it let me know when everyone is finding We've all found 702 in the back of your hymnals. Okay. Give thanks to the Lord. Everyone, please. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of all his wonders. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels, and the judgment uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O son of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. 
the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. May the Lord have a blessing to these words. Amen. The next one up is going to be special music by Esther Graham, uh, Gump. You will notice that the program has changed a little bit today. Uh, we're going to have some special presentation per the bulletin. And after that, we will hear the message from our elder, Ben Wolf. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Uh, this song uh, popped up on my phone. It seems to have been around for a few years, but it's new to me. But um, the words really touched me, so I hope you're blessed. is made on notice on the earth in heaven now proclaimed and I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry but I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord, he said, My child, look around you. 
great is your reward. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. I am so glad you gave. that someone gave so that we could be here today. Um, at this time, Sister Linda Wagner will do a poem for us. And right after that, we will have a video with the congregation, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Recently, when I was asked to um, read a poem, I didn't know exactly what to, um, to read that would be giving towards the theme of Thanksgiving. And I know that this particular poem may not seem like it's a Thanksgiving poem, but it's a Thanksgiving poem to me that I want to share with you. I know that many years ago, or I know that many of you already know here that um, 16 years ago that I lost a lot of the members of my family. I was stunned, I was hurt. I didn't know what to feel, I was numb. And I just, I, 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 I didn't know what to feel inside of me and um, all I can do is to start to tell you that that during the time that I would go over to Orlando and to minister to my dad, I was his caregiver and I would help him with his, his uh, needs, his going to the doctors, whatever it may be. And this particular day, I went over to Orlando to help him out with insurance. And when I got all that done and I just came back over to Cape Canaveral, I fixed lunch for my husband. And um, when I was sitting on the bed, I was watching the news. And I felt this kind of like an inner voice inside of me telling me to call my dad. And I felt like that there was no reason for me to call my dad because I had just seen him and I had been with him the whole day. But I did call. But at the same time, I just tried to throw it out of my mind and I just... It's almost like I could hear the, the word saying, Linda, call your dad. And so I called my dad. And my dad, you know, answered. And I could hear on the back of the, on the phone there that he was watching the Atlantic Braves. 
and um, he was very tickled pink to hear from me, but thought like this was kind of strange that his daughter spent the whole day with him, and yet she was calling him that night. And so I called him and I said to him, he says, Linda, what's on your mind? And I says, Dad, I want you to know that I've decided to give my heart back to God. Now, that may not seem strange, or that might not seem strange to you, but it was something that was not on my mind to say to my dad. That was farthest from my mind. I, I had no intentions. I had left the church for 30 years, and although I loved the Lord in, in, in ways, I just was not a practicing Seventh-day Adventist. And when I told my dad that I said, I, I've given my heart back to God, and I wanted you to be the first one to know and when my dad said that uh, he was just tears in his eyes, and he said to me, he says, how could I be so lucky to have a daughter like you? And I said back to him, Dad, I'm the lucky one. I said, of all the kids in that orphanage, you chose me to come live in your home. With that, we hung up, and within... I would say probably an hour or so, I had a police officer come to my door and tell me that my father had been run over in a car and was killed. I could not believe that this had happened to me, and I couldn't believe that this had happened to him. He was such a good man, and I just... I, I, I just, I felt stunned. And during those times, during that year, from my father's death until the, the, uh, the other members had died during that year, I started to do things that would help me to keep my uh, head above water, whether it was write poems, to um, paint pictures, um, write stories, just anything to keep my head, just just keep some type of form of sanity going on in, in me. And so I don't know if you all remember that one poem that I that you would hear at least back then a lot that it was God's love letter to you. And I used to sit and listen to those poems over and over and over and over and over again. And so finally, I decided to write that poem for uh, uh, God's, lover, God's love letter to me. And this is how it went. My dearest Linda, I would like to be the one that could promise you a field of dreams that allowed you to lie down in the grass, becoming lost in your thoughts. I would like you to see the rainbows I could paint across the sky in your mind that reaches from horizon to horizon, glistening in colors like you would see after a rainstorm. I would like to make your days brighter, make your smile and give your, and, and your eyes twinkles telling me that things were going well inside of you. I want to hear that mountain of fear inside of you and bring you serenity in your soul. Allow me to take your hand and walk with me. I am your heavenly father, so allow me to give you strength and a sense of belonging. I know you're now alone. I cried along beside you with all your losses. I know how deeply you were hurting and want to help heal those wounds and give you the peace and love you need so much. My wish for you, Linda, is that you would know me as your Heavenly Father and to learn to trust in me. 
I won't ask much of you, your, your time. Sharing your thoughts with me any time would be just fine. I will paint those rainbows in the sky, bringing out the stars of hope and the warmth of the sunshine to surround you. But most of all, I want to wrap my arms of love around you and bring you peace to your soul. Please don't give up. Allow me to be your father, the Lord of your life. I am at your door of your heart knocking. Will you let me in? Love you with all my heart, your Father in heaven. If it hadn't been for that small voice um, telling me to call my dad, my father would have gone to his grave not knowing that I decided to give my heart back to God. And I don't know where I would have been if I really wanted to, uh, if I would have given my heart back to him. But because I said that to him, I knew in my heart I had to keep that promise. Thank you. That was a lovely, lovely poem, very heartfelt. Now the congregation will be joining us in a video song. It is going to be um, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. So if you wish to stand, you can, otherwise join us.
We will continue with the program. Uh, we're going to have a special music being uh, brought to us by our beautiful Shireen Hansen and her beautiful daughter, Savina. That's good? Okay. So wonderful to be here and living in a country where we have religious freedom. I'm so thankful for that. And even though we're going to have a nice Thanksgiving meal this week, nothing can fill our cup like Jesus. This is a song we wrote recently. And if you feel like singing it along, please sing it along. We are praising the Lord. Over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. So we come to you over and over again. Light in the darkness, you light up my world. You shine so much brighter than the sun. All consuming fire that cannot be quenched. Pour out your power on me Over and over again Over and over again So I come to you over and over again I come to you over and over again kind and gentle spirit you speak to me now i open up my heart to the truth the words that you tell me brings life to this soul there's nowhere else that i'd rather go over and over again over and over again so i come to you over and over again i come to you over and over again over and over
we come to you over and over again and you fill us up overflowing thank you lord i really feel like that song with went with sister wagner's poem i really relate to that poem it's beautiful when we come to him, he fills us up overflowing. He is the living water. He is the bread of life. Thank you, Lord. Our next program is being brought by um, our sister Esther Gum, and she will recite a poem and have a special music for us. Yes, I think I'll do it in alphabetical order. P comes before S for song. <laughs> so I'll do the poem first. Um, I usually um, like to um, let you know what inspired me to write whatever poem that I write. and. Um, even though for years I've enjoyed um, writing poems, I used to write pretty much romantic poems. But I feel within the past few years, not that I feel there's anything wrong with romantic poems, but I believe within these past few years, God has taken full control in taking me to another level. And, um, I will go based on this um, poem here. I entitled it, Thanks and Praises to the King. What really um, inspired me to write this, a few months ago, I, um, just before going to bed, I wasn't really feeling too good, you know, in my body. I don't know if you ever experienced any feeling like you're going to sleep that night and something doesn't feel too right and you feel like maybe this might be it. You know, you go to sleep, you may not get up. I mean, you can be feeling well and go to sleep and that happens. But when you're not feeling good and those thoughts come to your mind, at least for me, the only thing that was important to me at that point when I put my head down on the pillow is wanting to know that my soul was right with God. And I remember just whispering that little kid's prayer. Um, you know it, Jesus lay me down to sleep. And when I put my head on the pillow, went to sleep, and I woke up the next morning. Now my family, they don't even know this because um, to be honest, what I was feeling, I didn't know how to explain it. It, it. I just didn't feel good. I felt like maybe when I go to sleep, I may not wake up. Uh, I had my regular pains all through my body like I do every day, but I really couldn't explain what was happening, so I didn't tell my husband, I didn't tell anyone. I just prayed, and when I woke up, I saw the light shining through the windows. I was just so very happy and thankful to God. And I found myself over to the kitchen table where I've been sitting these past few years, um, where it seems like God is just constantly pouring into me poems and that's the reason why I get so passionate about this. I believe he wants me to share, you know, and to keep it to myself is doing no good. So therefore, this, um, this poem, thanks and praises to the king. 
and he gives it to me just plain and simple, so even a five-year-old can understand. He knows that's the only way I will understand, too, so that's how he gives it to me. Dear Father, how can I say thanks for the many things you have done for me? A simple thanks seems hardly enough just knowing the agony you suffered way back on Calvary. There are times I am tempted to doubt, but you always put a song in my heart, hallelujah, and all I can do is shout. I know you're my Father, I know you're my God, and for me, everything you give, it's only the very best. I thank you for big things, and the small ones too, because I know for sure they all come from you. I thank you for my offspring, and all the birds that sing, and to you and only you, all my praises I bring. There are many nights I lay me down to sleep, not feeling very well in body, and to share the story, words are not enough to tell. But once again, you saw fit to open my eyes again, and so I rise, and I thank you for allowing the angel of death to pass me over while I slept, and I thank you for a reasonable measure of health, which is indeed wealth. All of my thankfulness comes from a full heart of gratitude. At its highest magnitude, I can certainly say more, but to say any less would certainly be to suppress just how very much I've been blessed. And um, the song that I'm about to do, it's a, this is a new song, and. I don't usually um, do new <laughs> songs two in a row, so hopefully I remember. Um, but I would like to dedicate this to my family, the ones that are far, the ones that are near, right here, and last but not least, to all you, my church family, because I'm indeed blessed. upon me as I struggle along and they see I have nothing but they are so wrong in my heart I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see thank you Lord for your blessings on me There's a roof up above me I've got a best place to sleep There is food on my table And shoes on my feet You gave me your love, Lord And a fine family Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I know I'm not wealthy, and these clothes are not new. And I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you. And to me, that's what matters, though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me I've got a good place to sleep there's food on my table and shoes on my feet 
You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Indeed, very beautiful, sister. Thank you. Today is a day of all, all of our praise and thanksgiving and testimonial, but we also need the bread of life. So it is going to be brought up by our elder, Ben Wolf. Is the next Amen. voice you will hear. Amen. Amen. Am I coming through? Yes. Are you enjoying the Thanksgiving program? Yes. But you, you, you're ready to get to the, the, the what do you call it? The, the what? <laughs> they want to get to the finale. <laughs> the food. <laughs> Don't you all have food prepared for everyone over there? Okay, very well. Okay. I won't be long. I won't be long at all. I, 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 but I want to give a little testimony, too. Um, um, yesterday, I decided to go out and um, wash my car off. I go down to a place down in Sun Tree. I think you pay $25, and, and you can wash your car anytime you get ready, and they does a very fine job. And so on my way back home, I was feeling good, so I, I let the roof back and just riding, coming home, enjoying myself got home and parked my car, and forgot to put the roof back up. I got up and went out this morning, and it was drizzling. I looked at my car, it was all damp, but just from drizzle, you know? And as soon as I got out there and wiped it off, wiped down everything, because I was getting ready to come to church, closed my top and everything else. Hold that rain. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying, right? Thank you, thank you, Lord. We need to give thanks to God, don't we, huh? God is good to all of us. We need to give thanks all the time to him, huh? There's always those little things that we can give God thanks for. Yeah. I came up, you know, I tell you what, church service just not really church service unless you have the word of God. You can have all the singing, you can have all the good time you want, but you got to have the word of God. Something from the word of God, huh? Let's, 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 um, let's put up, let's put up, um, I, I, I have a little story that I want to share with you. I'm going to try to get down this as soon as possible. And you all can read along with me. And say, this came to pass as he went, huh? He was on his way where? To Jerusalem. And he passed through what? The midst of Samaria and Galilee. The next text Certain village. The next text. <laughs> One more verse I think is there. The self to the priest. The story, see, this, this story here tells us that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem and he passed through the midst of Samaria. In Christ's day, 
the Israelites and the, Samir the Samaritans, they were not even speaking to one another. You know, they had to work with each other on certain occasions. They did business with each other, but they would never sit down and socialize together. And I think the reason why is because the Samaritans, they believed in mixed marriage. And the Israelites did not believe in that. Over there, I don't know whether you want to just call them the Samaritans or call them Americans. Mm -hmm. Because you know we here, whoever you wants to get married to, it's up to you. But the reason I think God did not want his people mixed marriaging because he did not want them to be influenced by the religions of the other nations. God had a work for them to do, and he wanted them to stick with him as their gods. He knew once they start mixed marriaging that they would um, find themselves falling away from him. And, and they did, right? Huh? But the Samaritans now... They was not bad people. Jesus went to visit them. I, I love some of the experiences that the Bible teaches us, some of the things that took place among, it seemed as if the Samaritans was even more faithful than the Jews. If we take a, take a look at the story of the woman at the well. You know, she, when Jesus uh, met her at Jacob's well, Jesus was just thirsty, really, really thirsty. And she came to that well. He was waiting for somebody to come to that well. And she reached down and she began to draw up some water. And Jesus was saying, if I could have a drink of that water. But it just wasn't common for, for a Jewish person to walk over and, and, and begin talking to a Samaritan. But Jesus went over. He, he, he tore down that barrier. He went over and told her, could I have a drink of that water? And she turned to him. She said, how is it, you being a Jew, come in and ask me for a drink? Jesus said, if you had asked me for water, he said, I would give you water that you would never, ever thirst again. Could you imagine what started going on in her head? Huh? She said, who am I speaking with here, huh? And when it finally dawned on her that she was speaking with the Messiah, she ran into the city. <laughs> what happened when you find out that you're speaking to Jesus? A change come over you, huh? She ran in the city and told the whole city. And they came, people came and gave their lives to Christ. That's a Samaritan woman. There's another story. I wanted to bring to your attention. It's the story of the good neighbor. It's about a man who had gone down to Jericho and fell among thieves. You know that story? Hmm? They say a priest came along, saw this man beaten nearly to death. And rather than reach out and give the man a helping hand, he crossed over to the other side of the street, fearful of his life. Then a rabbi came along, a teacher of the word of God, saw this man in the same condition and did the same thing rather than give them a helping hand. Crossed to the other side of the street. But there was a man who came along, reached out and picked up this man. He didn't care for his life. The Bible said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of peace and love, sound mind, to do the right thing. Picked him up, put him on his animal, carried him to safety, paid for his medical um, attention. Told them that if there is any additional fees, he's coming back in, 
when he get back, he'll pay the rest of it. This man was also a what? A Samaritan. So it seems like the Samaritans was more faithful than God's people. Is that something for us to think about? Is there people out there who are more faithful than, to God than we are? And also, there's this story that we just got finished reading here this morning. It went on to say that as Jesus was passing through Galilee, he saw these men, 10 of them, was crying out to him. They were lepers. They said, Master, help us. Master, save us. Master, they was crying, I'm telling you. You know, I think Jesus just allowed them to cry out a little while too. They couldn't come near him because they had leprosy. According to the law, you couldn't go near nobody. You had to let somebody know if you had leprosy. Stay away. But they were crying with the top of their voices, Master, Master, help us. The Bible said that he that comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that do what? diligently seek him, and they were diligently seeking him, crying, master, master, master. And Jesus stood up and looked at him. I, I wanted to tell, I wanted to describe to you all just a little bit in the shortest way I could possibly to tell you all something about leprosy. I, I, I was thinking of a way, how could I explain to them what leprosy really was? And I thought of the text, John 10.10. 10. Do, you, do you have that there? Is it up there already? Huh? Well, somebody, let's read it together. It says what? The thief cometh not but to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. Uh, this talking about the thief come to steal. Who is the thief? Who is it referring to? Satan, right? Or the sin of Satan. What is it? Leprosy. The first thing leprosy steals is your hope. Hmm? You know, you look through your mind's eye and see your future. When you look through your mind's eye, you should see the cross. You should see the kingdom. You should see Jesus coming again. This is all your hope. But leprosy steals that. And the next thing, what it says, he come but to steal and what? Kill. It's inevitable that the leprosy is going to kill you. And one more. It destroy. How does it destroy? You find yourself losing parts of your body. A leper. This, 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 is, this thing is talking about not only Satan, but talking about Satan's disease. The, the worst malady that a person could come across is leprosy. Then what did Jesus tell him? What did he tell him to do? To do what? He told him to go show themselves to the priest. Did you see that? It's not there. You don't recall that? He, that's the only thing Jesus did, stood up and told him to go show themselves to the priest. Why did he tell them to go show themselves to the priest? Put my next text up there, what it says. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy 
but to fulfill. Jesus kept the law. And the law says that before a person could be declared clean, he had to go before the priest. Jesus told him that, just go your, show yourselves to the priest. And what happened as they were on the way to the priest? Hmm? They was healed on the way to the priest. What happened after that? Let us read our final text here today. We're getting ready to close up here now. This is a sermon. Now, this is not a sermon. But I hope there's a message in it for all of us. But it says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. You know, you can stop right there. Stop right there. How many was cleansed? How many turned back? One. Hmm? There is a percentage here, church. Yeah, you, you, you know why only one turned back? You, 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 it, that sounds unusual. Does it? For one person to turn back and ten of them being cleansed. Does that sound at all unusual? I'm glad you said that. Because Ms. White says that that is an everyday occurrence. Right now, all, you know, everybody that's, that's healed is healed by who? By God. People think that they go to a doctor and pay some money and then give them some pills and the doctor calls them to heal. You know, I compare a doctor with a farmer. That's a pretty wide gap, isn't it? Hmm? A farmer, a doctor, he went to school about 10 years. How long did the farmer go to school? Hmm? <laughs> that farmer cultivates, get that soil just right, and drop that seed into the ground. Can he cause any germination to take place? Hmm? No. Who does that? God does that. A doctor can do all he, within his authority, within his knowledge, in his power, can he cause anybody to be healed? If you get healed, it's done by God. Hmm? And you need to give him the glory. You know, I tell you what, I was going to close this thing up here today saying this. This whole thing is about percentage. A 10% who came back, 90% who didn't come back. I want to leave you all with a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer to me. But I think you ought to answer it to yourself. Find out which category do you fall in. Are you in the 10 or are you in the 90? Hmm? We need to ask ourselves that question. Do we thank God for all that he's done for us? He does a lot. And he wants to do more. I want to stand here longer too. But somebody said a sermon that and it's over. Thank you all very much. Amen. That was beautiful. Our final special music is being brought again by our sister Shireen and Savannah. And um, thank you for your patience in waiting, but there's a lovely meal waiting for you after that. Um, please, thank you for your patience and thank you for coming and being blessed. Amen. Thank you for the message. That was beautiful. The theme today is come to the Lord. He will fill our cups overflowing. He loves to do good things for his children. Oh, you are the abundant God. We love you so much, creator God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father God.
Like the woman at the well I was seeking For things that could not satisfy And then I heard my Savior speaking Draw from my well That never shall run dry Fill my cup, Lord I lift it up, Lord Come and quench this thirsting of my soul Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more Fill my cup, fill it up and make me There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures earthly things afford. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my cup Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me So my brother, if the things this world gave you Leave hungers that won't pass away My blessed Lord will come and save you If you kneel to him and humbly pray Fill my cup, Lord I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me Closing hymn. We, we, the closing hymn. Before we sing, um, we're going to ask those who need a basket after we sing, we're going to ask them to come up, okay? And he's going to do the closing prayer, then come up, please. It's going to be hard to follow up with that amazing song, hymn, that was really beautiful, really. You know, the Lord fills our cup, and today I felt filled up with love and singing and praising. But we will stand to do the final closing song. Please stand. To, to God, God be, be the, the glory. glory. Please join us and let's give him the glory. To God be the glory, great things he adored. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who Let me hear the 
the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase heaven there, Lord. We're truly thankful for this wonderful day, this experience in your house there, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would bless every heart here today there, Lord. Cause us all to surrender there, Lord, and fall at the throne of grace. We're just so thankful there, Lord, that we can cast our cares on you, know you care for us. And we ask, O oh Lord, if you would just bless Every heart present here today, dear Lord, and as well as those who would like to be here, we enjoy this Thanksgiving program, dear Lord. Help us have a, a good holiday season. We thank you. We praise you. Now, dear Lord, there's food that's been prepared for the saints here. We ask, Lord, that you bless it, that it be nourishing for our bodies, dear Lord. And the strength that we gain, dear Lord, may we use it to honor and glorify you. We thank you. We praise you. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you, dear Lord. Oh. 